Hi everyone, it is Bridget here from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen wishing you a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. I hope you're well and I hope that you are safe. Thank you for joining me on this very fancy episode of But Healthy Cooking. <laughs> yeah, it's healthy for your butt, but it's healthy. And the whole idea is we take really popular recipes, really well-known recipes, around the world popular recipes, and I give you my version which is but healthy. So tonight we're doing Ikea, if anyone's ever been to Ikea, Ikea meatballs with mash and gravy and their famous jam, but healthy. And it's exciting because I know that there's a few of you out there who have gotten in contact with me and told me just how much you or someone in your family adores the Ikea meatballs. And I still remember my very first time I was taken to Ikea. It was by Mahi. He had lived, he'd been living in Sweden for about a year, so he knew it pretty well. I'd never ever been there. And we went through all the aisles and then he said, you've got to try the meatballs. And I remember picking up the plate and going, why is there jam on my meatballs? Had no idea that this is quite a, a popular thing that is done in Scandinavian countries, especially in Sweden, is they serve a sweet tart jam on the side of their, of their meat products, whether it be pork or beef or, or even chicken. And um, very, very nice. So I thought I would give it a bit of a go tonight with you guys. We're gonna make Ikea meatballs, all the trimmings, but healthy. So uh, why don't you join me down on my bench? And don't forget, if you would like a copy of this recipe, I will be releasing it tomorrow on Bridget's Healthy Kitchen on Facebook. So you just need to be on Facebook tomorrow on our main page, Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. The recipe will be released. And if you want a copy, you just ask, we send it to you automatically and then you can print it off for yourself. Because there is actually four recipes, four, one, two, three, well three and a half recipes in one here. We're going to make the meatballs with the gravy, of course. We're going to make the berry, well I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk you through the berry jam. Um, and there is also the mash that we're doing as well. So come on down, come on down to the bench, we better get going. Sounds like there's a lot to do, it's not too hard guys, you know me. I don't like to make things too difficult, but as you can see down here already, I have a fabulous jar of jam. Now I'm going to show you the original IKEA one. It is called Lingen Berry Jam, and Lingen berries are very, um, you know, popular type of very tart berry things, similar to cranberries, available in that part of the world in the northern hemisphere. Um, good luck trying to find fresh Lingen berries down here, or even frozen ones. So um, I could not find them because they just I don't know where to look. But there are alternatives to obviously if you can't get hold of frozen or fresh lingon berries. And those alternatives make the most spectacular jam. And what I have in this jar here, I actually used raspberries, frozen raspberries. So I'm talking about the jam first because this is obviously something that you can make well in advance. You can make this well in advance. This will, this will stay in your fridge, you know, for two weeks. You don't just use it on meatballs, you can put it on pancakes, you can put it on coconut yogurt, you can put it on your gluten-free toast. So many options, right? So many options. So in this little jar here, I have 300 grams of um, frozen raspberries I use. Um, as well as that, I had a bit of lemon juice, I added some zero as sugar, the pure erythritol, and just a bit of xanthan gum, and I was able to produce in about three, four minutes, or maybe actually, it was about five minutes, I produced this amazing jam. So if you would like the recipe for that jam, keep uh, watching, and also, um, don't forget that tomorrow I'll be sharing with you, you can get all the ingredients for the recipe. It's so simple to make, you can close your eyes and make it. But that is my alternative to this, which is the uh, IKEA version, because of course, the Ikea version has in it, wah, wah, wah. well it's got lingon berries, which we kind of guessed, 45% lingon berries, and the rest is pretty much sugar. So this is basically just berries and sugar with a little bit of water, some gelling agent, and yeah, some food acid. Whereas my one obviously is sugar free, <laughs> fantastic right, sugar free, um, which is really good for us, plus wonderful raspberries, which is just it's got such great antioxidants and stuff like that in it. So if you want the recipe for my jam, we're going to put that to the side now. I just want to talk you through that. If you want the recipe for my jam, tomorrow on Bridget's Healthy Kitchen on Facebook, you can get your recipe. But let's make the uh, meatballs first. So in my bowl here, I have two types of ground or minced beef. 
because I looked at the uh, ingredients on the IKEA ones and they too had two types of meat, but I tend to make my meatballs with two different types of meat. I mean, you can do just plain beef ones, you can do just plain, you know, pork or veal or even chicken ones, but I'm doing a combination of two types and I've got on this side, I've got beef mince, you can tell it's quite quite dark red and it's a lovely lean one as well which is another way you can tell whether your beef mince is lean is it should be a darker color if it's got more white marbled through it that means it's got a higher fat content so I've got a nice lean beef mince 350 grams of beef mince in there which is about 12 and a half ounces on this side here I've actually got some pork mince so you don't have to use pork mince you could like so you could do all beef you could swap out the pork for some veal you could even swap it out for some chicken completely up to you but you want to have a combination of the two and with the pork mince I have 150 grams which is just over five ounces of the leanest pork mince that I could find so you always start with two uh, it's going to help not just to create a more tender uh, lovely little meatball but it's really going to help to balance out the flavors too you know there's a little bit more fat content in our, in our pork it's a little bit more lighter in flavor as well so we get a lovely balance of the flavors here which is really really important so the next thing we're going to think about doing is adding in some salt I'm just using a mineral salt here and I'm going to be putting in two teaspoons so by the way 500 uh, grams in total which is just over a, just over a pound of ground meat will serve three to four people. So it's three to four portions that you got here. So two teaspoons of our mineral salt goes in first. I'm also gonna be putting in some inulin powder um, to help to make it obviously a prebiotic so it gets even healthier for us. But once again, I'm looking to balance out the flavors. Um, so I'm adding the inulin powder, not just to add, become a prebiotic, so I'm increasing the dietary fiber in our meatballs, but it's also going to help to balance it out by adding a bit of sweetness. And I'm doing a tablespoon of our inulin powder goes in. And in the, I suppose, in the, the vein of wanting to add and balance out flavors, I'm gonna be doing something that may shock a few of you. <laughs> I'm gonna be adding in some mixed spice as well. Adding flavor, adding spice, mixed spice goes so well in meatballs if you haven't already tried it. And I'm putting in one teaspoon of mixed spice goes in there. It's gonna flavor it up so nicely, but let's keep on adding flavor. This time we're gonna be adding black pepper, which I've just realized is nearly all gone. Look, I've only got a few left at the bottom of it. I, I use a lot of black pepper. <laughs> so one teaspoon, if you've got it, ugh. Yep, okay, I'm grinding right to the end. <laughs> I think I'm gonna need some more black pepper. So one teaspoon of black pepper goes in there. To help bring everything together, I'm also gonna be putting in another favorite condiment of mine, and that is a, my sugar-free Dijon mustard. You can see how much I like it because I only buy it in the big jar. <laughs> I don't buy those little jars, it's a waste of time. Yeah, I go through them too quickly. So um, this big jar of mustard, actually got it from Costco, it's pretty cheap at Costco. It's only like, I don't know, seven or eight Australian dollars for this big, Jar. How much is in this jar? It's huge. Oh my gosh, there's nearly a kilo of mustard in there. 865 grams of mustard. That's like oh, way over um, a pound of mustard. And it's about seven to eight bucks at Costco, Australian at Costco. So um, mustard, and I make, make sure when you're looking at mustard, like I love this brand, it's called May, and it's a French mustard. And this mustard house has been around since the, since the 18th century. It is literally to die for. So um, a big tablespoon of our wonderful mustard goes in there. It's not a hot mustard if you're concerned. It's quite a, you know, it's Dijon, it's quite a mild mustard. It's quite a well, well balanced mustard. Obviously there's no sugar in there, there's no gluten in there. I just adore it, I just think it's the best. And this, these guys here may make such a nice, a nice, nice mustard. Okay, so that's another flavor we're gonna be adding. Or that we've added but we also need to consider that we need things to hold together when the meatballs are cooking or when they are cooked so in that case I'm going to be putting in some psyllium husks which is going to help to bind everything together um, it is also going to increase the dietary fiber content of our meatballs so there's a double whammy here when it comes to certain ingredients that I like to add so with our psyllium husks we're going to sprinkle in a tablespoon of psyllium husk that's going to help it everything to just bind really really nicely and we're going to put that off to the side just for a second because we are going to be adding a little bit of onion not much I actually don't need much onion in, in this so I'm adding well half of a large onion or one small onion 
but you want to make sure and I think that this is one of the key to meatball success is that I don't want to have like big chunks of raw-ish onion in, you know, in my meatballs because that would just be horrible. So what I am going to do, if I have my, no I don't, oh no, <laughs> oh give me a second, I've got to find my, my machine, did you see my little machine my heat? No, it's not in there. In the tr you know my little blender? Have you seen my little blender at all? I've got the lid. Oh, oh gosh. The, the, the yeah, and the... It's in the, at the top. At the top. Okay, one second guys, we're nearly tracking down my machine. We need the machine for this, it's really, really important. Try no, it's not at the bottom. It's not at the top. No, it's not at the bottom either. Oh no, I found it! I found it! I found it! I just need the... Yes! Success! Success, we have found it. So the reason why I took all that time to find that is that I was going through the reason why I wanted to cut the onion really, really fine. Because the last thing that you want is to have chunks of, large chunks of raw onion because it can be quite bitter. Hence why I took the time to track down my little machine because I want to put it in here because I actually want to create more of a minced onion as opposed to a... Um, uh, a, you know, a, a chunky onion, and it's the same if you are like creating meatballs of any description. I always suggest that you mince your onion because then it's still you've got onion flavour, but not that bitterness, which is what we don't want. So blend away. <laughs> And you want to be going finer than what you would normally do. So this is literally a minced onion. Yes, you could grate the onion as well, but you guys know me and you know that I have really sensitive eyes. <laughs> and can you imagine me grating an onion? Yeah, there'd be tears. Makeup would be running. So I go for this one. It's a lot, it's a lot nicer on my on, on all the time I spent doing my makeup. Alright, so minced onion now goes in. And just, just, I think you'll never ever forget, whenever you're making meatballs or you're making maybe hamburger patties or something like that, you're always going to be mincing your onion because now you remember me taking my time to find my machine. <laughs> and just <laughs> how important that step was. Okay, alright, so we've got pretty much all the ingredients in there now for our meatballs. I'm not going to bother with any garlic or anything like that as I want them to be quite... I'm not going to say sweet, but quite mellow. You know, these are the type of meatballs that you can give to kids as well um, because they're quite gentle and delicate. So give them a bit of a mix through. And I'm actually going to get right involved in a second. I've got clean hands. I cleaned my hands before we went live today because the best way to do your meatballs or even your patties, if you're making burger patties, is literally to get hands involved. So give it, and what you're doing here is you're actually squishing, you can see it me squishing the mixture through my fingers. That sort of step there really does help to blend everything together really, really well. So it's an important little step. And it's fun too, and this is a great activity. You know, like I had mahi um, rolling meatballs this morning. <laughs> Yeah, meatball for, meatballs for the people, that's exactly right. So this is an activity that you don't have to think you have to do on your own. It's actually a good one to share because, you know, it's hands-on. You can really feel the product. You can see I've created almost like a ball of the mixture. I know it's really well mixed now because I did it. It's through my hands. It's fantastic. It will always be you trying to do it with a spoon. So that's our mixture. Ooh, yeah, you've got to smack it down too because that's really important. Yes, Mahi? What brand of mustard do you use? What brand of mustard do I use? I use this one. I know it's backwards, but I'm going to show it one more time. It's backwards, <laughs> but it is called May. M-A-I-L-L-E. Look for the black label with the gold. It is a French mustard house and it is a Dijon. I use the May Dijon. It's lovely and mild and it's just, it really has helped me stay on track when it comes to staying healthy because I can add so much flavor with this and not add any nasty things, which is really important. All right, back to our meatballs. Like I said, phone a friend. 
if you'd like some help with the next stage. Uh, it's not difficult, it just can be a little bit time consuming. And in fact, it's probably the most you know, time consuming aspect of what we're doing here today is rolling the meatballs. I've got my little scales here. I've given it a bit of a clean because ideally you want to be getting them around about the same size because then they cook evenly, which again is, is obviously quite an important step. So I'm going to be going for 40 gram size balls, which is around about one and a half ounces. One and a half, whoa, 40! Mate, I nailed it. Did you see that? So we have this little running <laughs> competition. <laughs> so, I nailed it. it is, do you want to take a photo? Oh, actually, no, okay. All right, so. <laughs> I did, I nailed it. I probably won't do that again, but there you go. That's what 40 grams looks like. It's kind of like a golf ball size. It is the perfect size for meatballs. The IKEA ones tend to be a little bit smaller. I actually like mine a little bit bigger, but feel free to do like 30 gram or one ounce balls. Up to you, you know, sometimes some people think if the balls are smaller, they get more, <laughs> which makes sense. I get that. All right, so 40 grams, it's a really good idea when you are getting this little meatball production line going, is that you weigh first. So you do, oh, oh there's a big piece of onion. Goodbye, not you. You weigh, 40 grams again, look at that. You weigh first. It just helps with um, speeding things up. So we weigh, it's 45, I'm just gonna take a bit off. You weigh and then you roll. So you, literally, you think of it like a factory. A factory assembly line where one job happens and then the next job happens. And um, it just seems to speed things up. It's how we do it in commercial kitchens if we've got a lot of things to do and it all requires the same movement. You will literally see one chef weighing, one chef rolling. Or the chef, same chef weighing and then rolling. So 40 grams or 30, up to you. Like I said, it's completely up to you. Rolling is as simple as. Rolling just literally requires you picking it up giving it a bit of a squish, and then what you're doing is you're sitting it in, you're, you're basically using the palm of both hands. So you're sitting it in the palm of your hand, and then with the other palm kind of cupped, you're not adding pressure, you're just rolling like that, and you get a lovely little meatball out of it. So let's just quickly get these rolled. I wish Mahe's hands were here, he's an expert roller, now that he's been rolling so many. <laughs> he's a great roller, but that's okay. It doesn't take too long. Like I said, this is way faster than if you were you know, measuring and then rolling. It's just such a great little tip. Great little tip. Okay, so now that we're at this page, and the psyllium husks have really made them um, hold together really well, and I can I can feel the difference of when I was testing this recipe and I didn't use psyllium husks, and they fell apart on me. They're really hard to roll, whereas these ones are really easy to roll, and that is all thanks to that, that additional dietary fiber that we added in, which was our psyllium husk, and, um, and how it's created a really, really manageable meatball, which is fantastic. Okay, so over to, over to here, I'm gonna be turning on my little frying pan. And rather than putting oil or fat or whatever it is into my frying pan, the best way to attack this is actually to put whatever sauce you're gonna be rolling it into, and of course, we're gonna be using sticky sauce. So I'm gonna be adding into my little tray here, you want about four tablespoons of sticky sauce, that's for all the 500 grams of meat. And literally, my sticky sauce is really thick, by the way. I'm just, I think I may have over, <laughs> I think I may have over reduced it. So I'm just gonna water it down, it's really thick, jeez. Okay, that's, that looks better. I've just added a little bit of kombu to it, actually. Okay, so um, with my four tablespoons of sticky sauce, like I said, the easiest way is to roll the meatballs in the sauce, as opposed to, you know, trying to dribble it on. This is so much easier, because now that it's at this point, I'm just going to throw them into the pan. And I know that it's completely covered because I'm doing the rolling. And if you've got a big enough tray, you could actually literally roll them all at the same time. I'm actually taking the long, the long road by having a little tray. Just put that four tablespoons of sticky sauce into a large tray. And yeah, good to go. And that four tablespoons will do quite happily all the meatballs, all the 500 grams of meatballs that you, um, that you are gonna have rolled. They're gonna be perfect. 
All right, looking good. Loving it. I'm gonna make more meatballs, but I've got other things to do. I have other things to do. So I've got this on medium heat, by the way. Medium, medium to high, actually. I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. What I'm looking to do here is get color on the outside of the meatball. That color is nice and brown. <laughs> Hence why I'm turning it down a little bit. I'm going, whoa, whoa, you're colouring up real fast. All right, I'm just going to leave those there just to do their thing for a couple of minutes and get colour happening. Because the next thing that we need to talk about is the mash. And the mash that we're going to be using today is um, pretty, I think you guys already know, right? I, I reckon you already know. What I have pre-prepared, you can see it's steaming, it's hot. So I have my cauliflower here that I cooked in my pot um, for, you know, four Porsche serves. You could make up to a kilo of raw cauliflower in your pot to make mash because it's that mash component, that cauliflower mash component, which is so incredibly high in fiber and so good for us, right? So for four serves, I like to do a kilo of raw cauliflower. You just cover it with enough water just to cover the top of the cauliflower. Generous pinch of salt goes in, bring it to the boil, and let it cook for about 12 to 15 minutes until it's you know nice and soft and you're able to squish it. Well, maybe don't do it with your fingers because this is really hot. <laughs> I'll stop doing that. That was quite hot. Yeah, squish it in your fingers. And then you know it's ready to be mashed. So we're gonna create mash out of that. But just before I start that mash, I want to show you what's happening here. Look! Don't they look great already after a couple of minutes? But I would like to just Cook them a little bit more and cook them a little bit more evenly. So I'm going to turn to our friend Kombu here and I'm going to add into my frying pan about 200 mils, which is seven ounces, seven ounces of kombu water. And that kombu water is going to help to cook our meatballs, but I'm going to turn the pan down kind of want it on a medium to low now because I don't want the meatballs to, I don't want them to boil. I want them to steam a little bit. They've got a lovely color on the outside. I want them to steam a little bit. And you can speed up this process, of course, by putting a lid onto your pot, which I'm gonna go over here and do right now. I forgot the lid. Get it in. That was easy. All right, lid goes on. That's gonna help them to speed up. All right, let's focus on that mash. Now, I was talking about one kilo or 2.2 pounds of raw cauliflower going into there. We have um, obviously cooked it. It is nice and and soft now and the, the way that i like to make my cauliflower mash is with my stick blender because then i don't have to change pots or you know, put anything into food processors so i'm going to do everything in this with the stick blender but just to add some flavor what i have in here is roasted garlic so i've roasted some garlic in um, garlic bowls and a little bit of and then I put it in olive oil to keep it for a little bit longer. So I think my roasted garlic recipe is in my air fryer ebook or in the green book, I think. More from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. I'll just get my hey just to do a quick check of the book. Just find out where the roasted garlic recipe is. Can't remember which book it's in. So um, roasted garlic is, a lot, garlic is a lot sweeter than, than, than raw or, you know, or raw garlic or, or fresh garlic. So you can go a little bit crazy here and for one kilo of cauliflower i would add 10 to 12 small cloves of garlic you can get away with it and because i page 46 roast garlic. roast garlic oh it's in it's in the yellow book guys it's in the yellow book eat your way slim and healthy or bridget's healthy kitchen you can get my roasted garlic recipe it's in there i just added yeah i added i added a good generous amount of roast garlic into that which you can totally do totally do and it's gonna so flavor this mash it's gonna be amazing so let's just add as well as that we're going to add a pinch of salt, not pepper, because I don't have any left. So we're not going to be adding pepper. It's okay. We don't need it. Because what we do need is just to mash away. And this creates literally the smoothest mash. If you're wondering if it's smoother than uh, a potato masher, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I love this little stick.
plastic blender because you see what I really like about it? It's metal, so I can do that without worrying I'm going to bend the, or break the plastic housing. So if you are in the in the um, in the market, if you're shopping for a handheld blender, just make sure that this part here, like your stick part, make sure it's metal. That metal housing is going to last so much longer than the plastic ones because you're able to tap it and make sure you get everything off. Everything off that's not supposed to be there. All right. So, most important, have a taste. Have a wee little taste of your mash. Oh my gosh. That is so delicious. It's so creamy. Oh, that's all you need. Oh, literally. Roast garlic. I put just a little bit of olive oil in there. You don't even have to do the olive oil part, but the roast garlic is so sweet and it blends in so well. You make the most delicious, delicious, creamy cauliflower mash. It is to die for. I just used that twice in today's class. It is amazing. Amazing. All right, back to our meatballs. Let's have a little look what's happening in here. Fabulous. We are creating, not only are you creating cooking the meatballs, but you're also cooking the gravy at the same time. It's when we start getting clever, I know. This is when the clever happens. Because rather than having to cook a whole separate pot of gravy, isn't it smarter that we actually make the gravy all at the same time that we're cooking the meatballs? And that's pretty much what we've done. So the gravy is a combination of the sticky sauce, obviously, that we put on the outside of the meatballs. It is the kombu. You can see it's got a lovely, lovely color. Can you see the color? I'll show you. Can you see the color? Oh, you can't. All right, that's a bit hard, but trust me, it's got a lovely um, brown tinge. It's, it tastes amazing, just like that. I actually don't want to add any seasoning to that. I don't want to, I don't want to do anything. I think it's fantastic just the way it is. It really is. Like, if you taste your gravy at this point, or, and I, I can't call it a savory sauce. If you taste yours at this point, you're like, nah, it needs a bit of flavor. Consider adding, adding maybe a little bit of tamari or a little bit of mustard or obviously a little bit of salt and pepper. But I'm so happy with that right now. I'm not gonna bother to do any of those things that, because for me, we are pretty much ready to go. So it's time to consider how we're gonna plate up our little Ikea masterpiece. It doesn't take that long, did it? I know I talked a lot, but it doesn't actually take that long. Like the hardest or the longest part is rolling. Once you've done the rolling, everything's easy. All right, over to our mash. We wanna start off with a big dollop of our creamy, creamy, creamy mash. Goes on first. And let's just do a little, let's just make it fancy. You're ready to say you make it fancy. Get a spoon and then just go like that. <laughs> and then you can work at any restaurant. Once you're able to do the spoon little flick, you're good to work at a restaurant. <laughs> All right, our meatballs have been cooking probably for, you know, I don't know, maybe five to seven minutes now, which will be absolutely fine. So all we need to do is just to take a look at that. This is so good. And I know I do, I do uh, lots of meatball recipes because I grew up um, on you know a, on a diet of literally minced beef because it was cheap and it could go a long way and you know there was lots of things that mum could do with it so we did eat a lot of mince growing up. Um, meatballs weren't one of them though because they were just too time consuming for her. So for me meatballs are just like absolutely fabulous. I love them so much because I didn't actually get them a lot as a kid. So meatballs are on there. Check it out. Amazing. Probably got way too many in that portion, by the way. But I'm just trying to empty out my uh, empty out my plate, my my frying pan if I can. Because what you want to do now is turn up the temperature a little bit. Because we want to get this gravy just a little bit thick, just a little bit thick. It's not to be, don't have to be really really thick, but I just wanted to reduce it down just a little bit because that is going to help the flavour to concentrate even more. I'm going to use my little spatula to make sure that I've got everything. Um, you know, collected off the sides because there's so much flavour and those little, you know, crunchy bits that we're cooking onto the bottom when our meatballs were cooking. So you don't want to waste any of that flavour. So what you could do at this point in time is you could literally put a lovely spoon of gravy right over the top of your, of your meal. Um, if you wanted it to be 
even more closer to the IKEA savory sauce is they actually finish these off with a little bit of cream so you could and that was just normal cow's cream you could if you wanted to finish yours off with a little bit of good quality uh, coconut milk it's going to give you that creaminess that you're after but at the same time obviously coconut milk has no lactose it's not dairy so you can get away with it and it's going to taste pretty fantastic too so that's up to you i'll leave that part up to you guys whether you want to add a little bit and then we just go with our gravy and we spoon it on top well it is looking so good and then of course we need to finish everything off with that jam that we made that wonderful wonderful sugar-free jam lovely and tart it is incredibly tart this jam so you don't need much and in fact um, I think I think that's what's so great about it is because it's got so, look look at can, can you see the color? That is amazing, right? That is such is such a good jam. But check out the consistency. Look at that. Check out the consistency. So if you want to know how to make this jam, because this jam is just good, even if you're not using it for you know for meatballs, this jam is such a nice recipe. Then um, download the recipe tomorrow on Facebook on British Healthy Kitchen. The recipe is in there for this. And so, like I so said, you don't need much. And we're just going to do this lovely little double of our, of our jam. And I'm doing, like I said, this is a raspberry jam on the side. And there you have it. This is my version, my healthy version of IKEA Swedish style meatballs with mash and savory sauce. And of course, that incredible jam as well. Now, I want to do this side-by-side -side comparison. I promise that I'll do that for you guys. So let's get that going now. So, on this plate here, I have the actual IKEA version of the meatballs with the mash. So these are IKEA meatballs. I bought them at IKEA. That is IKEA mash. I bought that at IKEA as well. And as well as having those, I'm gonna put that there so we can do our little side-by-side -side comparison. As well as having that, I also bought the gravy. This is the IKEA gravy which I'm going to pour on and of course there is the lingonberry jam which I'm going to add a spoon of that as well so those are the IKEA ones but let's discuss what we have in front of us because this is the important stuff here I need to put on my glasses for this by the way <laughs> so I can see what's going on so IKEA meatballs mash gravy jam but healthy meatballs, mash, gravy, and jam. Come on up here. Let's have a chat. Let's have a chat about what we've got here. It's because I, I was able to, when I was at Ikea, I bought everything. Because you can buy all the Ikea stuff. Um, they, it comes frozen. You can buy them all frozen. And, yeah, that meatball does look like it's been frozen. <laughs> That's the Ikea one. So what is in the Ikea meatballs? Now, you already know what's in our meatballs. We have two types of meat, beef and pork. Uh, we have a bit of salt, inulin. We have some mixed spice. We have a bit of pepper and mustard. You know, psyllium husks, all the really good healthy stuff that we've got in there. It's, it's, it's really good. In the Ikea ones, um, they have beef and pork as well. Then they have water. They have onion. They have breadcrumbs, which means you have wheat flour, yeast, sugar, salt, and gluten there is egg there is canola oil salt sugar and spices so the thing that concerns me the most about that is obviously there is sugar and there is gluten in your ikea meatballs it's amazing what they sneak what what they sneak sugar into there's no reason to, but it's in there there's sugar and gluten in your ikea meatballs i kind of guessed the gluten part to be completely honest because they usually tend to um bind um, meatballs and things like that with breadcrumbs or with gluten but I was a little bit shocked not shocked that there's sugar in their meatballs so that's the first thing so that's the meatballs so with the mash the mash comes frozen as well in the mash we have well you know what's in my mash there is cauliflower and there is garlic and salt that's it because I ran out of pepper that's all there is right there's literally three things in my mash that I have on my plate there in the IKEA ones, which is that one there, we have potatoes, obviously. So high carb, high insulin causing uh, product, as you know what potatoes are. Um, but then we have um, milk, 
There is sunflower oil as well. There is butter. There is more oil. There is salt. There is wheat. And there is glucose syrup. So within that, once again, we have gluten and we have sugar. So they've even managed to get sugar <laughs> into the mashed potatoes, which is really, really not necessary. But that's what you get out of that. And if we were to talk about the, the savory sauce, the gravy, uh, it's made from potatoes. So we've got potatoes and more potatoes. We've got starch and starch. We've got carb and carb. Really bad for spiking our insulin. There's something called palm fat. Not even sure what that is. I don't know. I, I've heard of palm oil. I'm guessing it's the solidified version of palm oil. Uh, we all know how bad palm oil is, not just for this destroying of forests, but it's a highly toxic oil as well. So there's palm fat, there's flavoring, whatever that is, there's salt, there's apple powder, hmm, apple powder in there. Uh, there's yeast extract, there is caramel syrup in your savory gravy, so there's sugar. There's also glucose syrup, which is another form of sugar. And there's also sugar. There's three types of sugars in your gravy. You know what's in the gravy we just made here, because you made it. There is sticky sauce, there is kombu water, and if you so want, there is coconut milk. That's it. There's three things, whereas these guys have got three types of sugar in the gravy. Three types of sugar. My gosh. Oh, and then there's milk as well. Oh, and there's gluten. Maltodextrin is gluten. And stabilizers and spices. So... This is definitely, I mean, you, don't, you want to avoid that. You really want to avoid that. And then, come on, we already know what's in this, right? There is berries and there is sugar. There's like, there's like half of the amount, there's half the amount of this is sugar and the other half is berries. So um, side by side, I have to say that this is an insulin fat causing bomb, as you kind of know, right? And this is healthy, gut healthy, going to help you to to drop weight, not put it on. It is so good for you. It's good for your gut. It's good for dietary fiber. It's gonna keep you, you know, keep you energized. It's gonna keep you fr free from brain fog on a plate. I know which one I am definitely going to be enjoying as opposed to one I'm not really sure I'm gonna be wanting to do. So come on back down to the bench one more time so you can see our side-by-side -side comparison. That's our Ikea. And that's our butt healthy one. And guess what? It's healthy for your butt. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget I'll be sharing the PDF with you guys tomorrow on Facebook on Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. You can ask for it there. But in the meantime, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to Facebook channel. Subscribe to Instagram. And we are also on Pinterest. If you want more of these amazing, healthy, sugar-free, dairy-free, gut-friendly, gluten free recipes subscribe now and i hope to see you guys again real soon look out for that recipe tomorrow in Bridget's kitchen in the meantime enjoy your night and we will see you soon back here in the kitchen take care bye